This is my second YouTube cat funeral. The first time I made this creative video, I was singing. I was digging the grave. There was slow motion footage. You know, very dramatic. Uh, I'm not even interested in doing all that this time. Violet was my oldest cat. She lived to be 15. I've never had a cat live to be that old. So I thought that was pretty remarkable. I know they, they do live to be older, but she lived outside a lot. So that is old for a cat that spends a lot of time outside and isn't just completely pampered and babied. She was just the sweetest. Such a sweet cat. And she was lively. She was very spry to be so old. She was still running around and could jump up onto the counter. Um, in the last couple of years, she started getting more confused. And in the last month or two, she wasn't as graceful as a cat normally is. She was getting more clumsy. She was having a harder time jumping up into high places. I felt like it probably wouldn't be long. And then a few days ago she got sick. You know, I didn't know what was wrong with her. I knew that she wasn't feeling well. And I thought uh, she might possibly get better, but she may very well be dying. I thought if she hadn't shown some improvement by the next day, I would take her to the vet. Then the next day came around and I thought, I really don't want to traumatize her with that. She's already having a hard enough time. I don't want to stuff her in a carrier and make her ride in the car, take her in there and have people that she doesn't know to poke her with needles. And I just didn't want to put her through all that. So I took care of her myself and she got a little bit stronger. I got her to drink some water and stuff. She, she didn't want to eat, which was fine. That didn't surprise me. Even if she were just sick and was going to get better, she still wasn't going to feel like eating. So throughout that day, I thought, we'll see what happens. And then I think it may, may have been that night I just got the feeling that she didn't want to get better, that she was done. And so I, I, I knew she was trying to wander off by herself and she was just hiding in corners, just trying to get away from everyone and, you know, when animals are ready to die, they go off to themselves. My mother came by to see her yesterday evening. My ex-husband came by to see her yesterday afternoon and they said their goodbyes. She had been happy to sit in front of the heater, but yesterday she got to where she wasn't interested. She didn't want to be kept warm. She just wanted to go to cold, dark corners and And that was it. Last night, her muscles started spasming and that escalated into full-on body convulsions and I knew she was on the way out. But she was so energetic. I mean, even in the last few days, she was still physically strong and still so stubborn and she just had so much life in her that it took over an hour of convulsions before her body fully stopped and that was it. So I buried her this morning. You know, people are asking me if I'm okay. Yeah, I'm really glad that I know what happened to her and I was there with her. A lot of the time animals will just wander off to die by themselves 
and you don't know what happened to them. And I don't like that feeling of not knowing. You know, in this case, I was there, I knew what was going on. I've never had a cat to live that long. And she had a very active life and how can I be sad about that? She died at home where she was comfortable and I was there and actually all the cats were in the room. It was not such a terrible thing. It was natural. You gotta understand that I was raised having lots of pets. Some of them would go missing and some of them would die violently. Some of them would die young. So this, by comparison, is, it's really a, a positive and happy experience. She was the last cat that I had of that particular family that she was a member of. All my other cats are in a different family. They're all related to each other. Good old Violet. This is the hill where we've always buried our pets. My family's been living out here for 30 years. Like I said, we've had lots of animals. And you have to watch where you step on this hillside because you've got lots of craters like that. There. There. They're animal graves. I don't know, that may seem creepy, but like I said, it's just natural. There's Violet. If you aren't familiar with this sort of thing, the cinder blocks are to keep my dogs from digging there. Because dogs will do things like that. Maybe I seem kind of hardened to this kind of thing. Sort of insensitive. I mean, I could have gone into a lot of things that would sound a lot more insensitive, but I am really sensitive, and I love Violet very much. She was a good kitty. It's just life, you know? Things like this have been a part of my life all my life. Especially since I've been grown and I live alone. I'm the one who digs the graves. I'm the one... who carries an animal's body up the hill and... covers it over in the grave. When you're in that situation, you just have to accept things the way they are. You have to be at peace with the fact that you did everything you could. And I certainly feel at peace knowing that I took care of Violet in her final days. And I was there with her. And I did everything I could to keep her comfortable and make her feel loved, so. Like I said, it's not such a terrible thing.